here to do the prayer. I'd like to call the City of Muskegon City Commission meeting for June 12, 2002 to order. I'd like to welcome Pastor Josh Deere from Lakeside Baptist Church to lead us in prayer to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone stand if you could, please. Pastor. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of another day. Thank you for providing for our needs in ways that we could not provide for ourselves and for blessing us in ways beyond what we could have possibly imagined. Lord, you are so good to us. Things do not always go as we might would have preferred, but we know that through it all, just as Romans 8.28 promises, you work all things for the good of those who love and honor you. Lord, help us all to love you better and to love each other better as you command us to do. And then help us to notice the many ways that you do bless us and not to take those blessings or your goodness to us for granted. Lord, we thank you especially for the city of Muskegon. Thank you for permitting us to live in a city that we can be proud of. Help us to love our city well and to do whatever you would have us to do to make this a better place to live for us and for our children. Thank you for raising up leaders who care about our city and who are willing to do the work necessary to protect and improve our way of life here in Muskegon. Please give them wisdom now as they seek to make decisions which honor you. Thank you for hearing our prayers this evening. And we ask all of these things in the name of our only true Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. No call, please. Commissioner Hood? Here. Commissioner Spatel? Here. Commissioner German? Here. Vice Mayor Gallman? Here. Commissioner Waringo? Here. Commissioner Turnquist? Here. Mayor Warmington? Here. Thank you. First order of business tonight is the recognition of the Spring 2012 Citizens Academy graduates. Chief Lewis. Good evening, Mayor. Commission. I have a resolution here for the recognition of the Spring 2012 Citizen Academy graduates. I'll read this to them verbatim. Whereas the City Commission desires to provide citizens with a better understanding of the functions of law enforcement, dispelling misconceptions, and increasing positive communication between citizens and the police. Whereas it is the desire of the Muskegon City Commission to encourage cooperation between the public and law enforcement to possibly impact our communities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Muskegon City Commission hereby congratulates and recognizes the following participants. Crystal Baylard, if you're here, please stand up. Gregory Bergman, Cabrina Conklin, David Kaiser, Eric Knoff, Casey Orson, Craig Parleri, Ian Parcosa, David Zelander, Kyle Simic, Bradley Tripp, David Wilson. This is for the faithful attendance and completion of graduations from the 10 week spring 2012 Citizen Police Academy. On behalf of the City Commission, I thank you and I appreciate you participating. And I hope in the near future that all these graduates and put the word out um, in the fall of 2012 we're going to run another citizen police academy and it's everything and more of what i just included on this um, resolution and i'd like to give you a hand for participating thank you mayor thank you chief thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
and uh, thank you gentlemen for being here tonight and if you see your classmates tell them congratulations on behalf of the city commission and thank you for taking time uh, to uh, take an interest in city public safety and uh, Denny Powers thank you may we have the consent agenda read please approval of minutes city clerk summary request to approve minutes of the May 22nd City Commission meeting staff recommendation approval of the minutes environmental program mowing and mass uh, and trash cleanup contract planning and economic development summary request the contract for mowing of lots and trash cleanup of public and private properties previously held by Freelance Enterprise Incorporated had expired on March 31, <coughs> 2012. A request for bids was advertised and four companies placed bids. Freelance Enterprises of Muskegon Township is the low bidder for a three-year agreement. Staff recommendation to approve a three-year contract with Freelance Enterprises Incorporated and to authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the agreements for the mowing of lots and trash removal on properties located within the city. City MDOT agreement for the reconstruction of Sherman Boulevard from Lincoln to Estes. Engineering. Summary request. Approve the contract with MDOT for the reconstruction of Sherman Boulevard from Lincoln to Estes and approve the resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to sign the contract. Staff recommendation. Approve the contract and resolution authorizing the mayor and clerk to sign both. Approval of contractor for new construction of house at 605 Jackson. Community Neighborhood Services. Summary of request. To approve the contract with DeRose Builders Incorporated, 7786 Weiser Drive, Whitehall, for the new construction of a house located at 604 or 605 Jackson for the cost of $117,446. The property was purchased with neighborhood stabilization from funds from the Michigan Housing State Housing Development Authority and home funds from HUD will be used for the construction. After the new construction is completed, the home will be marketed to sell to an eligible <coughs> home buyer with an annual income less than 80% of the area median income. The city received six bids. Staff recommendation, approval for the Community Neighborhood Services Office to prepare an agreement with DeRose Builders and direct the mayor and clerk to sign the contract. Liquor license request from Top Spin Incorporated, 2536 Henry Street. City Clerk, summary request. The Liquor Control Commission is seeking local recommendation on a request from Top Spin Incorporated of 2536 Henry Street to transfer ownership of escrow 2011 Class C STM licensed business with Sunday sales permit, dance entertainment permit, outdoor service, and specific pur purpose permit from Team Red Dawn LLC. Staff recommendation. All departments are recommending <coughs> approval. Fireworks display permit for Muskegon Country Club. City Clerk. Summary request. Melrose Pyrotechnics Incorporated is requesting approval of a fireworks display permit for July 4, 2012 at the Muskegon Country Club, 2801 Lakeshore Drive. Fire Marshal Metcalf will inspect the fireworks on the day of the event. Staff recommendation, approval contingent on inspection of the fireworks and approval of insurance. Polling site relocation, City Clerk, summary request. Building closures, redistricting, and ADA compliance have forced the city to move polling locations. Staff proposes to move the following. Bluffton School Closure to Great Lakes Naval Museum, McLaughlin School Closure to City Hall, Hackley Administration Building, ADA Compliance to City Hall, Nelson School Redistricting to Department of Public Works. Staff recommendation to approve the polling locations changes as outlined above. Committee recommendation, the Election Commission approved the changes as stated at their June 7th meeting. Approval of title company for Community Neighborhood Services, Community Neighborhood Services. Summary of requests. To approve Lighthouse Title Incorporated to be used by the City of Muskegon for the title work and closing agency for the CNS housing program. Staff recommendation to approve Lighthouse Title Incorporated for Community and Neighborhood Services Title Agency needs. Thank you. Commissioners, you have heard the consent agenda read. Are there any items you'd like to have removed for further discussion? Mr. Mayor Gow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move <coughs> that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Been moved by Vice Mayor Garland, supported by Commissioner Waringo to approve the consent agenda as read. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Vice Mayor Garland? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Mayor Warmington? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Public hearings, item A, please. 2012-2013 budget finance. <coughs> Summary request. The City Commission may take action to adopt the 2012-2013 budget with whatever <coughs> changes or adjustments it deems necessary. City ordinance requires the budget be adopted by the second regular City Commission meeting in June. Staff recommendation, receive public comments. Upon closing the public hearing, the City Commission may decide to adopt the budget. 
Thank you. Commissioners, we talked at length last night uh, on a presentation from uh, city staff. Do you have any uh, follow-up questions to that before we begin the public hearing? Commissioner Spitar. Just one <coughs> comment. Based on that discussion, there seems to be general consensus on everything but one item. So I would suggest, unless something comes out of the public hearing tonight that alters that, that <coughs> we should adopt the budget and then the item the senior transit item ought to be handled as a separate issue under a separate, that way we have a budget done and we can still put the energy into focusing on coming up with a resolution on this particular item um, instead of trying to hold the whole budget up um, uh, before we come to a resolution. I think we had some good ideas yesterday and perhaps we'll hear a few more today. So anyway, thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience uh, that would care to? Do, are you suggesting that we? There's plenty of folks here that want to do the senior transit, right? And I want to hear what they have to say. What okay. I'm suggesting okay. is, is that we we split that issue off as a separate item from the rest of the budget because that seems to be the only point of concern in the community that I'm hearing anyway. Well, it is, but it's still part of the budget, so I right. think we're going to have to hear it during the public hearing. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is time for the public hearing. So I know that there's some folks here that signed. I'm going to call on you first. However, if there are other folks, because this is a public hearing, that didn't fill out one of these forms, we'll, you'll also have an opportunity to, to speak. Uh, and bear with me as I try to read handwriting because my eyes are getting poor and I haven't gone to the optometrist in a few years. Uh, Joshua Eldon Brady, I believe. Joshua, I need uh, you and all the others to please step up to the podium up here, and I need for you to give your name and your address, please. My name is Joshua Eldon Brady. My address is 1336 Spring Street. I just wanted to speak in support of the Senior Transit Program. I think it, it, is, a, it is a somewhat unique and is an, an outstanding program in our community. And I would like to ask if, number one, that you support keeping it in the budget, number two, if you don't, that you follow Mr. Wor Mayor Warmington's, um, I believe, suggestion from last night of giving us a chance to vote on a millage option to fund it. We need it. There's a lot of people that support it. If you can't put it in the budget, give us the option, too. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rollis, if I'm pronouncing that right, R-O-L-E-S is what I'm, Rollis, Rollis, okay, I always try to butcher them and I'm doing pretty good here. My name is Margaret Rolls. I live at 1350 West Tackley Avenue in the Village Park Terrace Apartments. As soon as I heard that the transportation system was going to be canceled, I panicked. So I got busy and I called all the buses and all any sort of transportation I could find. First, a taxi would cost me $60 round trip if I were to take that. The Red Cross is limited to low income. I'm not. The GO bus, you have to notify them two weeks in advance. When you have doctor appointments, you don't always have two weeks to plan. The city bus, Many people can't walk to the bus stops, nor can they wait for 15 or 20 minutes standing, maybe in the weather. The city transit system should raise the cost, the, the price of the transportation. A dollar and a half won't even buy a quarter of tank of gas. So what do we expect them to do? They can't stay in business unless we raise the rate. And I would say all of us, would gladly pay considerably more. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rose, do you have any idea what you'd be willing to pay? I'm sorry? Basically, uh, would you, do you have an idea as to what you would be willing to pay per trip? Yes, per uh, trip? the people at the Village of Park Terrace, three-fourths of us, said uh, five, no lower than five, four or five dollars. But a dollar and a half is just a drop in the we, bucket. We understand. Now, is that four or five dollars? So, like, if you were be going to the grocery store, it would be 
five dollars to the grocery store and five dollars back? No, no, no. no. Round, trip. Round, round trip. Round trip. Round trip. Yes. Okay. Another Just thing with this, the uh, go bus. You have to pay the two dollars each way. You can't just do a round trip. Oh, so or with senior transfers, you can just give them the round trip price and make one payment due. Okay. Okay. That it? Thank you. So the round trip price is three dollars, yeah. right? Yes. Now. Yeah. Yes. Right. And that that won't even buy a gallon of gas, much less. No. And another point: the senior transit comes right to your door. And, and the fellows are so helpful that uh, we've really become attached to them. Thank you. Commissioner Trinkos? Just as a point of information, I know that the Red Cross is medical uh, and there's an income requirement, but at age 85 and over, and I've heard from many people who are older than that, it's completely free. It's a free service. Well, I'm 93 and I did not qualify. You don't have to qualify if I'm saying that right. 85 and over is pre. Oh, well, when no I called. No qualifications needed. Is when that I called, correct? they didn't tell me that. Yeah. That's something I just found out. Mm -hmm. 85 and over, you said? 85 and over is pre. Mm -hmm. But that would No mean, income. But that doesn't compare to the service from senior transit. Well, the Red Cross guys are pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're attached to senior transit. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Dorothy Damage. Yeah. Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, my name is Dorothy Davidge. I also live at the Village of Park Terrace and I do not use the senior transportation but so many of my friends do. They depend on it for doctors, go to the hospital for blood work, um, dentist appointments and it's so nice they pick them right up under the portico and take them and bring them back and I can't really say much more than Margaret but it is sorely needed by all the seniors I think so that's all I have to say thank you, thank you. Mr. Nye Hello, I'm Roger Nye. I live at 1495 Westwood Circle in Norton Shores. Uh, I feel impelled to speak on this topic tonight because uh, of my own mother. Uh, basically, we have to remember that uh, when people get to a certain age, it's not just a matter of convenience uh, for them to have uh, safe, escorted transit available to them. It can also be a matter of life and death. Uh, my mother had a fall after alighting from a common carrier. Uh, she fell and uh, broke her hip in two places. Uh, within uh, a month and a half, uh, she had died of the complications, even though the, op the operation on her hip had been successful. So uh, this is a matter of uh, life and death. It's not just a matter of convenience. And uh, especially when we consider the uh, winter months here with the snow, piles of snow, uh, the sidewalks that are not cleared. Uh, I think this is uh, a very important service. We've got to all re always remember that. Thank you. Mr. Nye. Yes. Mr. Nye. Mr. Nye. Uh, ha have you attended a Norton Shore City Council meeting and suggested that they provide the same service for seniors in Norton Shore? No, but I definitely intend to. Okay, thank you. Mr. Olachek. Check 690 Southern Avenue, and I'm also speaking for Nelson Community Association. Uh, Would, could could you explain who the Nelson Community Association is, please, sir? Pardon? I need for you, to, if you could pick the mic up so that we could hear you a little bit, raise it up closer. Thank you. Okay. And then, All if right. you could explain to me who the Nelson Community Association is. 
We're one of the neighborhood associations. Oh, Nelson Neighborhood we Association. We from Nelson, Nelson okay, Neighborhood sorry. Improvement Association years Thank ago. You. I think we started in 1983. Thank you. Uh, we have quite a few seniors in our programs, and uh, again, I guess we got a little more confused here about how these funds were being allocated here. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Mazzotti again. I see that when you originally applied for this money, you asked for 911000 for the original, let's see, uh, What's the CDBG program? activities program. $911,000. Yeah, that, that's, that's the original amount that was listed on here. It's, this public hearing is on the uh, city's budget. Um, I think maybe you're talking about the. Well, this is a CD, CDPG projects and activities 2011 2012 yep. activities. Right. And this is apparently what you sent in and originally. We, we held, and that could very well be right, we, we held that public hearing. Uh, in May, I believe it was in May. The, that budget was adopted in May, and that's separate uh, and apart from what. This is the same one. This is now. this is the same one. Oh. It looks like the same thing, the same items on there. Well, the same amounts, except for certain certain things. I noticed in that original one, you asked for one hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars for public services. Is that your recreation programs? Your senior transit and the CBOs, and then uh, in the current one over here, I see they got the recreation program in there. You got the CBO grant. You got seventy-eight thousand. I guess is that what you were telling me about that you you got cut back. 60. I think you're talking about the community development block grant program. Right, 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 right. What we're what we're having the public hearing on tonight is the city's budget, which does not include the uh, community development block grant budget. And as the mayor indicated earlier, that budget was approved um, back in May. Well, I know what we're having the public hearing on is is, is uh, something entirely different. Well, we're discussing here to find out why. How 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 was this re reallocated? I guess I noticed that you took out the senior transit from the original program, and then you told us last time when I was here that uh, you applied for forty five thousand, I believe, and they and they cut it or did they cut it down to twenty? Mr. Olchik, I think $45,000 was what was in the budget last year for senior transit that came from the Community Development Block Grant funds. Mm -hmm. There's a citizens group along with the administration that makes recommendations to the City Commission for that particular budget, and that public hearing was held in May. And part of that, within that budget, there were not any funds that were allocated to the senior transit system as well as other not-for-profit entities lost their funding that they've had over the years based on the fact that the federal government has continued to not give as many funds back to communities. So we've had to make some cuts. Well, what's this in here? This is your narrative that you sent in. CDPG projects and activities, 2011-2012 activities. That's uh, is that the one where I that's don't, the I don't last year. See, I'd have to see what you're looking at, but I did. If, if All right, so they, they didn't. They, in other words, for this particular year, you didn't include the transit program at all. Then. And the, if the, any that's funds from the community development block grant funds were not included in budget for senior transit this year. That is correct. Okay, well, uh, I didn't understand what he told me the last time that he cut back 40% on it. Well, uh, perhaps there's some confusion, if I may. The 40% cut, I mean, I'll be real blunt <coughs> here. Elections have consequences. We all vote, and when we choose to vote for people who say they're going to cut our taxes and shrink government, 
That means there's less revenue and government gets shrunk. And what's happened is the current Congress reduced the budget of community block grant funds that they sent out to the various cities around the country by 40%. So the things that we were able to fund two or three years ago, there's that much less money to fund this year. And as a consequence, there's just not the money in that budget. So that's what you're seeing in that piece of paper. The money that we got is 40% less than what we were getting a few years ago. That source of funding is what was paying for this program. And just like we've had to make other painful cuts because we no longer have the kind of revenue sharing dollars that we used to receive and our community dev uh, development block grant monies have been cut and cut and cut. That means the programs they supported ultimately end up without enough money to pay for them. And that's why we're all in this situation facing cutting a, a, a very, very good, well-used program that everybody thinks highly of. I mean, that's the consequence. But the community development grant <coughs> budget discussion, that public hearing, and those decisions were made, what, two months ago. So now we're on to the general city budget. Well, how much how much did you actually get then for public services? In other words, you got 78,000 listed here that you were asking. Is that the with the cuts or without the cuts or what? Well, I don't have that budget directly in front of me at this point in time, but the point that well, I think... I, he's the one that gave me the information. Well, I don't think I gave you that information. What I, I think I indicated, I can say it again, is that the city received $823,000 uh, in CDBG funds. For total CDBG funds. That's, it. that's the CDPG projects part, and you got that, another That's one all of the CDPG. Oh, that's all that right. includes that home home projects one, too? That doesn't that's include separate. home. That, that's separate. Home and CDPG. Yeah, 246 two dollars you asked for over a million dollars, and you got 800000 We We can ask for whatever we want, but we get allocated an, an amount of money. I know. Year. I'm trying to find out how much did you get allocated. $823,000 in CWG funds. That's the whole thing. That's, That's the, the CWG funds. All right. Well, anyway, we had discussions about this. I guess uh, it's, uh, it's like these ladies here were telling my people saying about the same thing. I was listening to your dialogue here yesterday, and gee, I don't know, I guess Somehow there's not a uh, there's a disconnect here between the city hall and the people out in the public. There, I guess I don't I don't understand it. Uh, you must think you're talking about five dollar fares each way. You're talking about reducing the uh, the service to three days a week. I guess everyone's telling me well, what happens if you have a service Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. What happens if you have an appointment on Tuesday and Thursday? What are you supposed to do? Change it. So, and then $5 is just too much for a lot of these people. In my neighborhood, I'm on Nelson neighborhood primarily, but in them's there too. <coughs> what about maybe th three out of four of the families then there are on some kind of a government check coming, and that's, that's the situation. And they just can't afford to put that kind of money into it. They have a hard time even thinking about the gold bus. And the gold bus doesn't really work for them because many of them can't even get on it. And they can't afford a regular taxi service. This, is, this has been one of the good programs you've done in this, in this city. I mean, you've done some dumb things here, I know. But this is one good one you've done. I don't know why you want to give it up. You've got to do something here to, to get that thing going. You're going to have a hard time going back to the voters in, the, in this particular climate that you have. Everyone wants to cut taxes. That's all you hear about is cutting taxes and cutting taxes. And if you expect 
people to come in there and, and just hand over another tenth of a mill even, they're going to start questioning you. I know if someone mentioned something here after you raise your ceiling on your on your caps or your cap on your millage rates or whatever that is. If you ask for a, a one mill, people are going to wonder, well, you're only spending a tenth of a mill, what are you going to do with the rest of that money? You better make sure you get that thing right when you present it to the public. We're, uh, as far as our association is concerned, if it comes right down to it, we'll be glad to help you how we can. We can circulate petitions and help out in that way. But if it, if it isn't written up well, if it isn't presented well, it ain't going to fly anyway. I'm just, I'm just pointing it out to you as a, as a unbiased person over here. And I don't know. I guess you're going to have to you're going to have to find some way to to get this uh, this thing together. I don't know. Uh, this is not my province here to dictate budgets to you, but uh, considering what to, if you have a rainy day fund of about four million dollars, I don't know. It seems to me you ought to be able to find somebody in there somewhere to take care of this. That's all I'd have to say, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mills? <laughs> Come on, Mr. Mills, please. everybody for being here, uh, including you. <laughs> I get all excited when I see people standing up for their rights. Anyway, I want to start out by apologizing. The last time we were together for a city commission meeting, it was all emotional, and I apologize for that. It was wrong. Uh, as an explanation, not a, not a justification, but as an explanation, I just come back from Chicago, standing with others. Thank separate. you for the apology. We're Thank here you. to talk about the... the okay, you got it. Now, I was here last night, and I was listening to the commissioners uh, discuss uh, possible solutions to this seeming dilemma. Um, but I said, and I agree still, that uh, the solutions that were proposed seem to be a little bit off the mark because I think that your definition of the problem is a little bit off the mark. Um, first of all, I heard a lot of, you know, turning this thing into a joke, which always bothers me. When I hear people yuck, yuck, yuck about something so serious, it really bothers me. You know, I heard people use the word term Cadillac. This is a Cadillac service that we provide our elders here to the door pickup and stuff like that. I'm wondering, in the middle of the winter time, what is some old gal going to do? You know, and even though I don't use the service either, I don't even have a mom anymore who might. It bothers me when I go to the pharmacist and a, a somebody's mom can't afford the prescription drugs. It, my heart goes out. This is not just a luxury service, like other people have said. It's a life and death thing. Now, there was a mention last night, and this morning ago said something about, oh, there's only 281 people involved in this thing right now. And my comment was, if there's only two people, two somebody's moms who can't get what they need in the richest country in the world, in the city of Muskegon, where I see golf courses and I see, you know, other people, you know, entertaining themselves. In the richest country in the world, if somebody's mom can't get to the doctor or can't get to the store because we won't pay for it, there's something wrong. Now, I heard some talk last night about what's fair. Norton Shores doesn't do this. Well, Norton Shores does have, after all, a Meyer Market 50 acres, which we do not have in Muskegon. And if we have to go down and get some groceries, we have a long way to go. Anyway. Rather than worrying about what's fair and putting us on the ballot now, we were shifting the blame earlier, saying, well, we, you know, have elected state and federal government officials who aren't sympathetic. Well, rather than trying to blame them, we're trying to blame all the voters in Muskegon if we put it in the ballot, which fails because it's worded wrong or because they didn't turn out the vote. Rather than trying to find somebody to blame, let's think about what is right, not what's you know, fair or who's to blame. But what is the right thing to do here? If somebody's mom can't get what she needs, that ain't right. And we need to find a way to make sure that she can. Now, we need to come up with creative solutions. I know my friends have a number of creative solutions. And I can start listing them off. This one right here, she's got an arm load of solutions. And my comment last night and again tonight is rather than you spending your time, which you're overworked already, trying to create creative solutions to this problem, please consult the community. They have the solutions. We just need to implement them. Thank you. Thank you. Is 
there anyone else that would care to address this item? Yes, sir. Please, uh, I, I need, please step up to the mic. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I am Kay Winget, and I'm from the Village of Park Terrace. And I want you to know that I would like to thank all of you for all of your past service that you have provided for us. I have used it many times. And I want you to know that uh, it has not been money wasted. There's drivers that are so polite, and they put two people in the car if they're going in the same direction. It's, I mean, they, they try to cut back. They're doing the best they can. I know you people are, because you have a budget to follow also. But please remember, you may be pushing some seniors on the road driving that shouldn't be there. <laughs> Keep a mind of that also. <laughs> but anyway, I'd like to thank you because it's an excellent service and it's badly needed. We have people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s where I live, and I never realized how important this was till I moved there and had to use it myself. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Mark Evans, 1899 Barnes Road. I am the Director of Senior Transportation at the American Red Cross. Um, as uh, could, could you move the mic a little closer? Oh, I'm, I'm sure sorry. people are having a little trouble. I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, and I do understand the difficulties of keeping a transportation uh, program funded. It's not an easy proposition. Uh, the, the funding is not really out there uh, to, to get. You really have to work at keeping those cars on the road. It is a very difficult proposition. Even if you get the cars, you have to maintain the funding for the insurance and the gas and the uh, maintenance of those vehicles. So I, I do understand the difficulties you're having here. Um, we do provide, as the commissioner said, service to people who are over 85 free. Our service is a free service. We do take donations. Our service is getting pretty full. Uh, since this announcement, our ridership of City of Muskegon residents increased by 50 percent. We do not have a lot of space in our cars. Our current funding levels do not allow us to get more vehicles right now as much as we'd like to do that. Even if we could get the money to purchase it, we'd have to keep it on the road. We are looking at trying to find funding, and as the commissioners know, that's not an easy proposition. I will let you know that we don't do only provide medical transportation. We do not take to the stores or the library or any place like that, unfortunately, because once again, our cars are pretty much filled up. In the middle of the day, there is no room. Uh, we have uh, about 40% of our riders are dialysis patients, so we have a lot of folks who really, you know, it is a life or death ride for them. So what I can tell you is we have, a, we have some space at American Red Cross, early mornings, late afternoons, um, we'd love to give you a ride if you need one to a medical uh, facility. Uh, it may be difficult uh, to get the appointment to match up with your appointments, but we will do our best for those of you who don't have any other transportation because we do think that all seniors should be able to get where they need to go in the county of Muskegon because you deserve to get those rides. Sir, you don't, in other words, if you're not 85, you can't you can still ride if you are over 60 and are low income, up to 150 percent of, uh, of poverty. What do you consider low income? Uh, the federal regulations for low income, and I have okay. that number here. Maybe you can discuss that with her afterwards. I can discuss that with you. <laughs> or set up a meeting to go out to the hat out, out there, and so we can continue with this. So I just wanted to let you folks know about our service and that we do have a little bit of space, but uh, you know, you don't. I mean, we just don't have a lot, and we're only medical appointments. But uh, best of luck to all you folks, and you know, you have you know, well, the Red Cross is there to help you if we can. Are you facing budget constraints? Uh, yes, okay. we, 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 we fund ourselves with, uh, with uh, donations, with grants, uh, you know, we get money from United Way, but uh, you know, it's all, you always got to put new proposals in every year, you have to get approved, you have to get the money, uh, and uh, as you know, all funding sources are, are being cut. I mean, federal, there's not enough, as much money as there used to be wherever you go. You know, we used to get money from the Muskegon from the CDBG funds, okay. and obviously they don't have it because they can't even support their own cars right now. Um, uh, well, I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm just saying that's a fact. Um, and all you know, all federal 
monies are down, and you know I, I'm I'm struggling to keep my eight cars on the road right now. But you know we're going to do everything we can to keep those on the road, and you know as I say, we'll, we'll do our best to try and pick up some of the slack here. But you know we just we're, we're pretty we're pretty cramped. So yeah. that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Right, thank you. Thanks. Please step forward. I'll get to you. I'm Phyllis. I've called every single one of you. And I called the senator, too. I've called every single one of you, and I appreciate you listening to me. I didn't want to get up here because I have trouble with this. But we need help, and we can't. We pay our dues, we pay our taxes, and we vote. And I think, and we've got, we are all spouses of World War II veterans. We're trying to make it on our own, and we can't drive anymore. You don't want us out on that road. And someday your parents or your grandparents, I'm going to be 90 years old in J July 16th. Someday your parents or your grandparents are going to be in the same situation. And if you're still working then, and they have to go to the dentist two or three times a month, or the eye doctor, or the foot doctor, or have blood work done, or have cancer, they're going to have to call on you because they can't get there. They can't get to their appointments. We can't. Sure, we live in a wonderful apartment in a wonderful city. And they, you know what they're saying now, love Muskegon. We do. We've paid our dues. Why can't you help us? You can take away. You know, you have that graffiti. You have a fun for to take care of. Clean up graffiti. Why can't you put uh, kids that are in trouble, uh, somebody that hasn't committed murder or something that's in jail or something that they could go out and clean up the why do you have to spend our money on, on cleaning up graffiti and cr silly stuff like that? Why can't you give us some money to help us? We'll pay fi we don't mean to pay $5 each way. We mean we would pay $5 a, a round trip to go to where we have to go. I t I've taken that place, I've taken that car three times last week. Three times last week. I can't get there any other way. And I can't take Red Cross. I'm, I'm going to be 90. I c but you can't, you don't know if you're going to be sick and have to make an appointment two weeks ahead of time. So please help us if you can. Mr. Mazzade, I, mean, I was your old neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> your kids were my paper boys. <laughs> and, uh, I used to take their mittens when they leave them on my porch and I'd put them in the dryer and call you up and you'd come and get them. <laughs> that, uh, God bless you all and thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank I'm you. sorry. Thank you. Anyone else? Jenny? I suppose our city manager is squirming at this point. I brought my <laughs> friend Cisco Kid along. My name is Robert Jennings, and I still live at 3553 Marina View Point, which uh, used to be a short walk to CJ's. The building is still there, but of course the building. Would you keep on the business with is the budget? Is this about the budget, sir? Uh, I'm sorry, no. Is okay. are we just and doing budget? Yeah, this budget. is the budget only. We'll get. We'll give you. A oh, like okay. Well, I'm out of order. Uh, will I have a chance to? Yes, you will. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> is there anyone else that would care to address the? Uh, Budget, public hearing. My name is Gail Funk, and I li also live at the Village at the Park at 1350 West Hackley. I just want to make a couple of comments on the gentleman that got up and talked about the Red Cross. I know of what he speaks because I've drove for Red Cross for about two and a half years, taking people to dialysis machines from all over the Muskegon County. 
Uh, but now I'm getting to that age where I'm thinking of not driving because, well, I don't mind dying, but I don't want to cause somebody else's death. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I, but I got to find some way to get around. So that's all I've got to say. But I want to thank you for letting us be here and to speak our minds. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Spitar. Thank you. I would move that we close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Spitar, supported by Commissioner German, to close the public hearing. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner German? Yes. Vice Mayor Gowron? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Mayor Warmington? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Commissioner Spitaro? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Spitar. Thank you. Uh, before I make the motion, I just want to preface, I think we ought to split this particular item from the main budget since this seems to be the main area of concern. I think it's important that we have a budget in place going forward for the next year. So that's why I'm going to make a motion to adopt the budget as presented, knowing that we will come back in a couple of minutes and address this other item. So I would move that we adopt the budget as presented. Second. It's been moved by Com Commissioner Spataro, supported by Vice Mayor Gowan, to approve the 2012-2013 budget as presented. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Gowan? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turquest? Yes. Mayor Warmington? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Spataro. Thank you. I would move that we direct staff to um, come back to us. Uh, hopefully, is uh, the 26th too soon? Depends, Depends on what you ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, last night, for those of you who weren't here, we discussed uh, a number of items, including temporary funding to get us through the end of the year and placing uh, an item on the budget, uh, uh, on the ballot this November for one tenth of a mil. To, that would cover this program going forward. We know that this is an amenity that Muskegon offers that no one else in the county provides. But we realize how valuable it is. And I mean, I appreciate you all being here, but you're telling us what we already know, that this is a very valuable service for the people who use it. And none of us wants to cut it. The reality is there's just not the money. So we have to get creative in figuring out how do we keep things going like we have with youth programming, and some of the other things that we've had to cut over the last few years. So, I would move that we direct staff on the 26th to provide um, uh, a proposed ballot item and uh, pr funding to carry us through to the end of the year so we can uh, put that ballot item on the uh, November ballot for one tenth of a mil. Second. Is that clear enough? Well, I, I think we need to give direction uh, as far as the budget. Are we looking to continue to do, because we discussed, so the folks know, we discussed items last night that said maybe cutting the service to three days a week instead of five days a week, and I know that could cause issues, but if it was for a doctor's appointment, hopefully your physician's office or dentist's office would understand that you would have to have an appointment on either Monday, Wednesday, or Friday in order to get there, or are we looking at doing it in I, five days? My my. Thought we're they're covered through the end of this month. Correct. So on the 26th, I would assume that proposal would include, um, you know, raising the fee. We've already heard there's a willingness to look at that. Days of operation, um, and then we look at, at you know some other items in there. But those were two big issues, and I would assume that that proposal would be based on the memo that was circulated uh, based on the discussion last night. Uh, showing costs and what it would take to get through the end of the year. So people are covered through the end of June and if we take action in, in, in the second meeting of June, uh, we should hopefully have a way to carry this forward for the remainder of 2012. So was, there was there a support on that? I second it. Okay. It's been moved by Commissioner Spataro, supported by <coughs> Commissioner Waringo to direct staff to bring a proposal hopefully by June, the June 26 meeting in regards to um, maintaining uh, the senior transit uh, system 
budget for at least the first, apparently the first six months of fiscal year 2012-2013 and with ballot proposal language to bring before the citizens of the city of Muskegon the opportunity to vote to uh, fund this as a, a regularly operated program. Yep. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Mayor Warmington? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Vice Mayor Gowan? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And I would suggest to any citizens that are out there that are creative enough to come up with other ways to help finance this program or the American Red Cross program or other programs that help seniors as far as transportation would begin to work on those type of items to assist any of the transit systems throughout the county. Thank you. New business, item A please. Proposed button development agreement changes promissory note with BRA, city manager, summary request. The city's Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, BRA, is obligated to reimburse Benton Automotive Group for eligible costs incurred in the redevelopment of their Henry Street projected plus project plus 6.5% interest. Total reimbursable costs plus interest to date amount to $1,681,590. Under terms of the original development agreement, these costs would be paid by the BRA over several years as tax increment revenue was collect were collected. Interest would continue to accrue on the unpaid balance. As described more fully, this proposal is for the city to loan the BRA $1.66 million to pay off Benton now. The benefits are as follows. Benefit to BRA reduced interest costs from 6.5% to 3.25% payable to city instead of developer. Benefit to city rate of return higher than can be achieved on investments like CDs or U.S. Treasuries. Benefit to developer, cash received up front to help facilitate further development of Henry Street Corridor. Also benefits the city and BRA. The city would be repaid over 13 years or sooner at a rate of 3.25% from BRA tax, BRA tax increment proceeds. Staff recommendation, approval of proposed development agreement changes and execution of the related promissory note between the city and the BRA. Committee recommendation. The BRA met on May 29th and approved the proposed development agreement changes and promissory <coughs> note. Okay. Thank you. Vice Mayor Gowan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that we approve the proposed uh, development agreement changes uh, for the uh, Benton development <coughs> and uh, execute the related promissory note between the city and the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. Have a support. Second. Second. It's been moved by Vice Mayor Gowan, supported by Commissioner Hood, to approve the proposed Benton Development Agreement changes and promissory note with the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Mayor Warmington? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Mr. Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Vice Mayor Gowan? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item B, please. Engineering Services Agreement for William Street Storm Outlet Engineering. Summary request. Authorize staff to enter in into an engineering services agreement with Fleece Vandenbrink Engineering out of Muskegon to perform an emergency survey design and permitting project to replace, repair a 54-inch storm sewer outlet at the northerly, northerly end of William Street, just north of White Street for an estimated cost of $9,800. Staff recommendation, authorize staff to enter into an agreement with Fleece and Vanderbrink Engineering. This recommendation was arrived at due to the urgency of the current condition of the storm sewer outlet and complexity of the project. Okay, thank you. Nobody wants to make a thank you. Commissioner Turnquist. I would move that we authorize staff to enter into an agreement with uh, F&V Engineering. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Turnquist, supported by Vice Mayor Gowran, to approve the engineering service agreement for the William Street storm outlet with Lisa Vandenbrink Engineering. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor Warmington? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Vice Mayor Gowron? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? <coughs> yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item C, please. Fireworks display permit 
for a community 4th of July celebration. City Clerk, summary request. Fruitport Lions Charities Group is requesting approval of a fireworks display permit for July 4th at Heritage Landing. Fire Marshal Metcalf has reviewed the request and recommends <coughs> approval contingent on inspection of the fireworks. Staff recommendation, approval contingent on all requirements being met. We also request that the late fees for the fireworks permit and special event be waived. Thank you. Mr. Mayor Gowan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that uh, we approve the fireworks display permit for the community on the 4th of July uh, with approval contingent on all requirements being met and also allow for the uh, late fees and uh, firework permit and special event uh, fees to be waived. Second. It's been moved by Vice Mayor Gowan, supported by Commissioner German to approve the fireworks display permit for the uh, fruit by the Fruitport Lions Charities Group and to uh, uh, it's contingent on all requirements being met and that the late fees and fireworks permit and specialty fee be waived. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Spitar. Just one, I, I, I think he's still, yeah, there he is. Uh, I just wanted to uh, point out that uh, County Commissioner uh, Bob Skolnick has been instrumental in filling this void that would have taken place in our summer. And uh, I just want to thank him for his leadership on that issue. And I'm sure he might be able to tell the community how they could help contribute to make the best fireworks possible if, if, if you have that contact information. Yeah, sure. And also, Mr. Johnson from the Fruitport Lions Charities, we yes. appreciate you stepping up to, to assist also. Thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Spataro. You know, I just, um, when it appeared that the uh, fireworks were not going to happen, um, I have been a member of the Pyrotechnics Guild ever since it was here in 1997. I joined a year later. I've been to four national conventions, and I just like fireworks. I'm, um, there that's, like, that's why you're a county commissioner. That's why I'm a county commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say your meeting tonight was exceptionally exciting compared to most of ours. Um, <clears throat> I, um, when I saw it wasn't going to happen, um, it struck me that nobody was stepping up and you know I've gotten myself in trouble before by doing that and I have to say that um, th I put it up on Facebook it all happened through social media and at this point um, th I've raised uh, a little less than thirteen thousand dollars the Community Foundation has agreed to match up to ten thousand so there's twenty three thousand dollars available for fireworks, I've, um, when we met with the fire marshal, who I have to tell you was terrific, um, uh, we met with the display operator uh, on Monday. Uh, Monday, um, I did give him the go ahead to spend up. T I gave him a, a budget because the the money that I've got will have to go for other th insurance and there, there's a lot of other things. I also want to uh, a couple things. One is. The money all came primarily from individuals who just stepped up, not necessarily from Muskegon, but from all around the county. And the thing that really kind of got me excited about it was I had just plain people, not rich people, <coughs> people that are just, you know, normal people that gave me like a thousand, they, they called me up or sent me an email saying, you know, um, I'll give you a thousand dollars to make that happen. And more than one, a number of them did. Five hundred, a thousand dollars, and the money just uh, came in from people who wanted fireworks in Muskegon County. Today we were talking about seating. Should those people get some special seats? You know what? I've decided nobody's getting anything special. There's no VIP anything. This is for the community. I didn't promise anybody anything. I'm putting my own money. In. I mean, I'm no more than anybody else. But um, nobody's going to get special seating because they paid money so um, this is just going to be as good as it can be I have to warn you probably not going to be as good as the summer celebrations they spent forty thousand dollars on fireworks we're not going to get there but um, the fact that everybody stepped up no money from the you know we're going to pay for police we're, we're not asking you to do anything for free we under I understand and it's going to be a great thing I also want to say one more thing um, when I was sort of running out of hope, because originally I tried to raise 20000 and it, I only had a short time to do it, I got a message from Mike Johnson, who has run the uh, Fruitport Old Fashioned Days for 20 or 25 years. I'm not sure. He's a member of the Fruitport Lions. And um, he said, and I've known him for a long time, he said, call me. So I did. And he said, the Fruitport Lions put on two nights of fireworks 
for significantly less, you know, it was like $8,000. Now that's a smaller venue. So he's, Fruitport Lines have become the partner in this and are signing the contracts, thank God. Because I, I although I'm planning on nothing happening, we all know that stuff happens. Oh, yeah. And um, I, you know, I'm too old to, to lose everything. So uh, the Fruitport Alliance can recoup it if they have to. <laughs> But um, anyway, we're going to have fireworks on the 4th of July. Um, there's going to be a rain day. I'm hoping it's going to be Friday or Saturday. I'm, it'll be one of those two days, so if it's a, a torrential downpour. Um, Mike has, without Mike, it wouldn't happen either. And uh, Well, the uh, Lions in general are here to serve. And uh, when a friend of mine called me and said that uh, they weren't going to have fireworks on the 4th of July, and Bob stepped up and says, hey, we want to do something. I mean, uh, when you look at the whole picture here, this is our birthday, everybody's birthday. And if we can't have fireworks on the 4th of July, uh, there's something wrong with us. And uh, like I said, the Lions stepped to the plate. Uh, my board of directors backed me after I made a verbal commitment on the phone. And uh, I think we're going to have a good show. I think we'll surprise you on what 20000 will do. Uh, everybody's impressed with what we do in Fruitport for eight, so I definitely am, uh, <laughs> you know, and Lions are here to serve, that's all I can say, and uh, we're proud to be part of this as far as this goes, so thank you. Mike. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mike, and, and, and Mike has done a lot of things for the city of Muskegon, uh, and, I, and I also want to acknowledge the Fruitport Lions because this is an organization that has stepped forward and is raising money for the families uh, that were part of that tragic motorcycle accident that happened over in Wisconsin a couple of weeks ago. And they've uh, brought their board, I'm, I'm assuming this, but brought their board together to uh, make it possible for people to uh, make donations so that uh, these families can uh, take care of their medical bills for those that have needed to travel back and forth to Wisconsin to be with family members they've done that so on behalf of the community would you please relay to your board that we really appreciate the extra effort that the Fruitport Lions has given this community in the last year okay. one thing I, I will mention we are a bona fide 501 c3 so if anybody would like to donate to either one of these events be it the fireworks or the MMG motorcycle donations if you make your checks out payable to Fruitport Lions charities they are totally tax deductible and that's one of the reasons why we went to the plate on the MMGs uh, so I will get a you can go to fruitportlions.com and get our address as far as that goes but any checks you make out to us are 100 percent tax deductible right. thank you thank you <laughs> On no, Any other discussion? Yet. Roll call, please. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Vice Mayor Dolan? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Mayor Warmington? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item D, please. I can call it, can I? Accept the resignation of Mayor Warmington. <laughs> I ain't doing it. We're not going to. We're not going to accept motion, it. Can I? <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, we're just going to run a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Spataro. Uh, well, with deep regret and lots of reluctance, I would move that we accept the resignation from Mayor Steve Warmington, effective June 30th, 2012. Vice Mayor Gowan. Second. Thank you. Welcome. It's been moved by Commissioner Spataro, supported by Vice Mayor Gowan, to accept the resignation of Mayor Warmington, effective June 30th. Discussion, Commissioner Spataro. Yeah, I just want to take a couple of moments to say that it's been a pleasure serving with you. Um, I think you have provided better leadership for this community than a lot of people realize. I know you've taken away from your family and your business to put the city first and that hasn't always been appreciated but I've appreciated it. You have operated with integrity and I know some people still have some issues that they blame at you but they're wrong. It wasn't anything that uh, you were involved with. You've always put the city first and I've respected that. 
you've helped guide this commission to be more respectful toward each other, to be better teammates, and to put the city first and not individual agendas. And I just think that after a decade, you deserve whatever you plan on doing, and hopefully it's fun and relaxing and you enjoy your family, and hopefully you stay involved in city events and projects and services because your talents will be sorely missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'll uh, I'll be saving my comments to the uh, to the last meeting, but uh, I uh, I would just let everybody know here because I know not all of you. Well, you may show up for June 26 to find out what we're going to do forward. Uh, it certainly has been a pleasure, but more than that, it's been an honor to serve the people of City Mesquite. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Roll call, please. Roll call. Commissioner Spitaro. Just say yes. Commissioner <laughs> German. Thank you. Yes. Vice Mayor Galran. Uh oh. Oh, here comes the hug. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Waringo. Reluctantly. Yes. Commissioner Turnquist. Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Patrick? Did you vote? Uh, I, I'm going to abstain. <laughs> 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 I think everybody knows my vote. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other business commissioners? Is there anyone that would care to address the commission? Mr. Jennings. Okay, uh, I, uh, Robert Jennings, uh, still at 3553 Marina View Point, us uh, in the Lakeside area, Harbor Town. Uh, Mr. Mayor and, and uh, fellow commissioners, I appreciate the privilege of appearing before you again. I was here in the May 22nd meeting. Uh, Mayor Warmington, I, I just want to say I don't know you well, and, and I'm a Johnny come lately, but I read so many good things about you in the Chronicle, and I know that your leadership will be sorely missed, and uh, I wish you luck in all the great things I'm sure that will be on the horizon for you in your retirement. But thank you so much for serving Muskegon. Thank you. Okay, uh, friends and fellow residents of uh, Muskegon, thanks for coming tonight. It's good to see so many of you here. This is democracy in action. So I want you to know that I'm glad you're here. Uh, I, again, I was here on May 22nd and I spoke uh, about a lot of stuff. I did a little bit of rambling, but I spoke uh, on a couple of important issues. One was a business uh, that was located on the Ovals, no longer there. It's called CJ's. It was a little pub right on the beach. I spoke in defense and tried to save that, tried to impress the commission with how important small business is, especially that one in our community, and I failed. I also uh, spoke on the unanimous uh, voting for uh, no bids contract for allied waste and picking up our refuse. Uh, I didn't get an answer to that, but I requested then from the city manager to contact me uh, with some answers in terms of, should be in your notes, uh, if not, it will be on film. Uh, I, I say that because you look somewhat surprised, but um, I did want to know about the polling process and why on a no bid, no bid, right, folks? Mm -hmm. Of why that was approved unanimously uh, on the basis of the community being overwhelmingly supportive. Okay, I never got, even though you have my phone number and address, I, I didn't get an answer from you. Okay. Okay, uh, so governing on empty or beating a dead horse, if you want to look at it that way, it's a closed issue, but if you look at Sagatuck, South Haven, Douglas, work your way up the coast.
Holland, South Haven, I'm sorry, Grand Haven, Skip Muskegon, uh, go up Pentwater, Manistee, Empire, Traverse, Ludington, and so on. They're all doing very well. There's one city, however, that is not, and that's Benton Harbor. Would you go home tonight or tomorrow morning or whenever you have a minute and Google Benton Harbor to see the demise of that community? The, um, it's, a, it's a coastal community that once had a lot of great, great assets. Uh, Whirlpool had its international headquarters there. Still does. You wouldn't want to live there today. No one would. Only ones who live there today have to because they can't find the other place. There are no housing values and much less else. Now Muskegon is on that road, folks. If you say, oh, it couldn't happen here. Again, Google Benton Harbor and you'll see that we're well on the road. Uh, every other day I walk the beach area. It's where I live and I pick up refuse along the way. Um, Bottled cans, um, discarded soil diapers, and whatnot. An absolute vodka bottle today. Now, someone's got some bucks out there. Um, I, I bring that up because um, that area is so important to us. You know, we, we have world class beach, and people come here. They don't have to pay, they don't have to pay to park or anything else. They can no longer eat at CJ's, of course, again, beating a dead horse. Uh, because that's a dead issue. I hope we've learned a lesson there. Uh, Mayor, may I approach the bench here with a, what I will call Exhibit 8? Yeah. Right. It's a little piece from the Chamber of Commerce. You don't have to read it now, Commissioners, but uh, I've highlighted an area that I would like to have you glance at there. And again, I hope that CJ's will serve as a lesson because the federal government spends upwards over $2 billion a year, $2 billion a year to foster business, support business. And we're at cross purposes with that. CJ won't be employing those college kids. It will not be buying food, drink from the local vendors in the community. And those dollars then, of course, won't be circulating. You've had economics I'm sure so you know all about that again I deeply regret that I couldn't convince you but hopefully again in the future we'll do all we can to keep businesses welcoming and viable in this community uh, secondly Mr. City Manager, I know it's in the budget. There's $130,000. Now, is that your department or salary or what? Could you please address the commission first, and then we'll, if we need staff, then we'll do staff. So, if you would, this is a city commission meeting. Yes. Because the electeds. The elected. So, if you just direct your questions to us, and if we don't know the answer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, again, I apologize. I'm kind of yes. new at this. I understand. Okay. Um, in the budget, $130,000 city manager. Is that correct? I have the budget in front of me. We don't know. I don't know. Well, I, we I mean, I, I don't know. Does it say, are you asking, does he make $130,000? I, I, I'm asking, is that a department allocation or is it's that? And the budget, it's a department allocation. Okay, I'm great. Sure where you yeah. Okay, that. thank you very much for that clarification. Okay. Because the, the actual budget for the personnel in the manager's office is higher than that. I'm not sure we're getting oh. 130, I, I, but that's for three people. Okay, I perused the budget and I had 130,000. I just wanted just to know if I was in. 258 for okay. three people. Thank, thank you so much. Okay, um, do you remember that I was here on May 22nd? I asked you about that contract with yes. Allied. Yes, you, I do. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't get an answer. So well, I, I'm not. I'm not certain that I remember the question. I do remember oh, oh. you being here to answer it. But I, I would tell you that staff brought before to the city commission. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, the discussion as to whether the city commission whether would uh, have an interest in them going forward because we have a contract with them now to extending the basically extending a mm -hmm, the existing mm -hmm, contract mm -hmm. okay. with them, and we gave staff permission to move forward to do that. Again, Mr. Mayor, all I know is what I read in the paper about mm -hmm. overwhelming support. And we all, I, I, I don't know.
Okay. But it wouldn't surprise me that we all voted for it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I related to you that I go out and pick up papers, and mm -hmm. I brought my Francisco kid here, which probably I, is not a. And again, I would say that doesn't surprise me. Uh, last night it was a very windy night, and the garbage was out on my street. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you, before the garbage was picked up this morning, one of my neighbors that had a full container and then a yeah. black bag on top of that. I've been there. Yep. That black bag was nowhere yeah. to be seen. I'm sure it rolled down the uh, down yeah. the street somewhere. So it, it doesn't surprise me. I can also tell you that there have been times when the garbage truck has picked the garbage up, put yeah. it in. As it goes up to put it down, <coughs> the garbage is spewed exactly. out. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's yeah. not a perfect system. Absolutely. I agree, yeah, okay. On the other hand, if you try to deal with those people, you know, as a customer, you know, uh, it's far less than satisfactory, okay? So, so much, and, and, and that's, that's all I want to say about that, okay. Um, I would make a suggestion to you, Mr. Jennings. Yeah. Um, if you deal with them directly and you're not satisfied, call your city commissioner. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I did do that. And I was told that the city no longer has, uh, I don't want to quote, but, you know, that, that the recycling was no longer a city's responsibility. And well, the recycling is not. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And, um, but garbage pickup is. Okay. Okay, the, the, the recycling <coughs> program, which, again, was a budget cut item from a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. uh, is on, on uh, for lack of a better term, a volunteer basis for those citizens that want to work with recycling and are willing to pay for the service. And I do that, yeah. Okay. okay. And I do all. And I appreciate well. having that service available. One last thing here. Uh, in my walks on there and picking up trash, do we pay someone to do that, or I, I mean, we we sweep the beach and all, but I mean, do we act? We don't have any sweep we, clean street. We don't really have no, uh, garbage police that are okay. out there. We do. Uh, we do pick up the garbage. We have garbage containers out there, yeah. and we have park rangers that yeah. pick those up. We'd like to think that most people would be courteous enough to put their stuff in. We realize this is not a perfect world, and many, many don't. That's and we sure. also find that yeah. quite true yeah. on the dog beach. Yeah. Commissioner Ware. I also pick up um, trash when I'm out walking. However, I am amazed at how clean it is when you think of the number of people who, I'm right on the beach, um, huh. who use the beach and, and the surrounding area I just think it's amazing how clean it is exactly I, I agree a lot of people are out there picking up trash but it doesn't uh, community bit. interest and Good dedication for our waistline, okay I have one last question please Mike. please or your time is yes I know okay I asked for eight minutes well uh, and I'm giving you already giving you more where it's normally three minutes you're welcome I to know. come back to the next meeting Go oh, finish. I come finish. back to the next meeting. No, I'm sorry, you come back every single yeah, meeting. Yeah. Right, go ahead, finish her up. Okay. Well, in my walk, I noticed out on the pier uh, one of the um, life rings, uh, personal flotation devices, mm -hmm. was out on the pier, and uh, probably 30 miles per hour wind. I'm still wind, wind burnt from it. Um, I, there's a warning or, or uh, informational piece on the cover that says, you know, you're being monitored or you know, whatever here. Um, if that ring were out there, could have been in the water, it wasn't, but it could have been. If that door were open and the thing is swinging, it shouldn't there have been an alarm someplace, or is that? Well, again, that's not, that's not a city in Muskegon. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that, uh, well, uh, again, uh, when you're... Okay, well, it, that answers that. Uh, again, I, I thank you for your time, and uh, especially commend... Uh, uh, Lawrence there, Mr. Lawrence, for the transportation issue here. You know, it costs a uh, million dollars for Cruz Mitchell. It costs a million dollars for one soldier in Afghanistan per year. I agree. Well, we gotta get out of there. Right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, James. Is there anyone else that would care to address the commission? <laughs> Hello, Joshua Elden Brady, 1336 Spring Street, um, Precinct 6. I have just a, a comment of concern and a couple of questions. One of the consent items tonight, I first became aware of a couple of weeks ago, that our polling location in Precinct 6 is being moved to City Hall. 
Um, and I'm concerned for a couple of reasons. Uh, Precinct 6 is comprised of parts of McLaughlin and Angel neighborhood. I know the uh, census map or census block in McLaughlin, uh, over 15% of the low-income households have no cars. In Angel, it's over 20%. So we have a, a significant number of people in our precinct who don't have reliable transportation. And I'm very much concerned as we come up to election day in August and then again in November that we're going to have a lot of people who want to participate, who are committed to participate, who can't get there. I know I live uh, near Wood Street about halfway across the precinct from City Hall. And even as a pretty much able-bodied younger adult, it's a hike for me. I can't imagine what it's like for those individuals who live over on Getty Street who may be, uh, who are senior citizens or who are disabled who don't have transportation. With that being said, I understand if there isn't a location in the precinct that we could vote, there isn't a location. My request would be to everybody who's here, if you have resources, if you're part of a group in the community that can provide transportation to the polls for those who can't get there because it's further away this year, and I'm sure that's not just in Precinct 6. I'm sure that applies to other precincts. I haven't looked at the whole map. Utilize those resources, help people get there. My request to the city, to the commission, and to staff is that we not just let this sit as an issue that we're going to vote at City Hall forever because we are this year, that in future years we go back every year and we look, is there a new facility that's closer that we can move people back to be closer? Because it's not right to be having to leave our precinct, to go out of sight of our precinct to vote if there's a facility there that we can vote. So we need to keep our eyes open for that. And my third request would be that the city commission look at is there anything the city has done in policy and how we add, um, how we allocate the grant funding and how we have local zoning set up and how we have business organizations set up that is discouraging organizations that might have nonprofit organizations, service organizations that might have places that we could vote from locating in the precincts where we don't have them. Is there a way that we can actively do something that the city can actively do something to try to change that situation so that we don't have to leave our precinct to vote. Thank you. I, I would I would attempt to answer a couple of those questions. First of all, I would tell you that the city clerk's office worked diligently in every one of the areas where we were losing a polling place. It wasn't the city that was deciding to do it. It was other uh, issues that brought, brought those to, there, to bear. So will we, please allow me to finish. Will we do that? We will, but I would also call on you as a citizen and other citizens, if you are aware of buildings that could perhaps be viable and the people are willing to allow voters to come in, that's another issue that's there, please let the clerk's office know and we'll certainly take a look at that. Number two is as far as distance and writing, I would tell you that traditionally over the last, I would say, four or five years, that uh, radio station 103.7, the beat, uh, has traditionally had people that if you would give a phone call, if you listen to that, s that radio station on, on election day, that they have people that will come and pick you up and give you rides to precincts, in particular that I've noticed listening to that station in the city of Muskegon Heights and in the city of Muskegon. So you might want to let, within your neighborhood association, let them know that on that particular day, if they listen to 103.7 The Beat, that they will be able to probably get phone numbers. I don't want to speak for them for this election year uh, for the primary, but traditionally, both during the primary and the general election, they have, because they want to see people get out and vote, they've had folks that will drive, pick people up, and take them to the polling place. And, and I am aware that most of those changes are due to changes in the school district and outside the city's control. And Certainly, if I become aware of some place, unfortunately, I'm not at present. I will be back with mm -hmm. that information. Right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would care to address the commission? Commissioner Spatel. I would move that uh, we go into closed session to discuss pending litigation. And attorney-client communication. And attorney-client communication. Do you have a support? Second. 
It's been moved by Commissioner Spataro, supported by Commissioner Wango to go into closed session for attorney-client communication and pending litigation. With a five minute, got to get rid of the Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Thank you. Thank you, folks, for coming tonight. We are listening. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Come here.